Well, no trip to the northwest would be complete without a little rain, and we've got a lot of rain falling right now at Lumen Field in downtown Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Tennessee Titans. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. First down, Tennessee. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. He was brought down. At and result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. From just shy of midfield, Tannehill. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down to distance count. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. At the Seahawks 30 yard line. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks 25. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. A couple of nice carries back to back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these aren't bare bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yard you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five, more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Second down, here's Henry. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. 
They'll try the air now with Tannehill. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20-yard line. And that was Carlos Dunlap who got in to take him down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Third and long, it's Tannehill. And right side, Henry's got it. And he is out of bounds, looks like right at the 15. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Walked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? yard attempt. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. Never ideal conditions in the snow for a kicker, but the first test on the opening drive, he passed it. He certainly did. You know what the unit told me was their biggest issue playing in the snow? You just worry about something getting in your eye as the ball is snapped, and then you might miss it, and there goes three points off the board. Koskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is D.J. Reed returning. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. He'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Tyler Lockett, a seven-yard pickup, brings up second and three at the 33-yard line. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And this Tennessee defense for the second straight play gets him behind the line. They're not messing around. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Two veterans there, Wilson to Olsen for a Seattle first down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Out to his left. Now he'll pull it down. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And, oh, he coughed it up. It's picked up by the Titans, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 41-yard line. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. The last run got six. Now second and four. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Over the middle to Smith. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. 
That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. A first down carry for Henry. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. That's one they certainly wish they had back. A loss of eight. They hand off to their big tight end. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. The tackle made just shy of midfield. Brings up second down. Second and 13, Tannehill, Smith catches left side. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And he's got a first down there after a gain of about 12 as the clock will stop right now for the two-minute warning. From the red zone now, Tannehill. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time, but it'll be second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Second and 10. Tannehill once more. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And the return just out across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Recovering by the defense. <laughs> Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. That's a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. From the shotgun, Wilson. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Throwing again here, Wilson. And he's got Lockett. 
Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Wilson will throw again. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. from the gun. Wilson. This will be caught inside the 10. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards and so is this one. First and goal at the six yard line. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. From the gun. Wilson looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver, but it'll be second and goal. Brings up second and goal. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Operating from the gun. Wilson to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Pass incomplete. Out of the end zone. Brings up third and goal. And now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down. Again, Wilson. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. Myers kick is good and that will do it for this first half so we've reached halftime in a low scoring affair just a pair of field goals 3-3 is our score as we'll send you eastward to Orlando standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman take it away coach and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. From the gun, Wilson looking for the tight end, Olsen, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Steven Gostkowski for the extra point. Those free safeties, they get to sit back there if they've got good pass rushers like this team does. Read like a book. He read it like a book and took it in for six. And if they use their eyes well and their anticipation skills, they can make big plays just as what we saw. A free safety's dream. Follow the football, go to it, and take it the other way.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. Back to the air, Wilson after the pick six. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. From midfield now, here's Wilson. And caught left side, Olsen. A gain of six there on first. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now it's Carson. Now Carson fumbles the football. It's picked up by the Titans. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can. And it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll... And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. Jadevian Clowney showing the explosiveness on the sack. The pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. So after the sack here, second and 14. On the delay, here's Carson. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Only a yard on the game there, and that'll set up third and 13. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get them much at all. No, not at all. That leaves them with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player for the play that he likes to run best. Third and long, it's Wilson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. It's Jeffrey Simmons that time who got in to record the sack. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Now here's Michael Dixon, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry rumbling past the 30 and all the way up to the 33-yard line. So that one will be accepted. After the penalty, it's Henry. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. K.J. Wright, the one who shot in there to get him down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Again, it's Henry. Powerful running, and they can't corral him. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner, but where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football. If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, 
oftentimes it's not a very successful play. And he will have a Titans first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. On first down, Henry. A gain of three, second down. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right, it might go to them in this game. I like that, MVU. Well done. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and seven, operating from the 34. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Henry's got it out on the left side. Tannehill's pass. It'll be a gain of four, and they're going to face a third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator is going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive linemen, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try and make a big play. And not only not getting off the field on two opportunities. Clock continuing to run. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there and a first down. I think there's a fatigue factor that's kicking in defensively. You know the will is still strong, but I think the offense is starting to bend it just a little bit, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's looked that way. We'll see if they can continue this already strong drive. They keep it with Henry on first down. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Oh, look at this. Down on the field still. That's Derrick Henry, the running back. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here. Third and five. Third down. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he will have a Titans first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. And that pickup of a first down. That's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, 
We're going to call timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Six yards left on second down. Again, it's McNichols as they stay on the ground. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And finally, taken down at the 15. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's McNichols. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. here for the Seahawks on third down from the shotgun now here's an inside give and he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker a nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot now that was a big time play by the defense they as well knew where the first down line was and they didn't let him get anywhere near it so on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here this to make it a two score game Goskowski's kick is good, and they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. Steven Goskowski. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. Here's Reed returning. And he gets it to the 30-yard line, but the football's not going to stay there. There's a penalty marker down. So holding will scratch off some of that return. And I know fans get frustrated when they see penalties of this sort on kick returns, but it is difficult to do it right against these moving targets at full speed. Hard to do. He's going to let... He's got a man complete. And all the way down. 40-yard line. It's a big play there for Seattle. And even 40 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. Wilson to throw. Here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Three yards the gain there, second down. Three-yard pickup. Brings up second and seven. Now Wilson. That's complete into the hands of Carson. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. That's a gain of six. Brings up third and one. Crazy how the pit was turned. You can fall to you. 
So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Seattle, so long, everybody.